Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we are going to talk about this horseshoes uh, ring and specifically how to arrange stone properly on it. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's starting with the stone that in the size you want. In this case, I have two millimeter stone. And if you want to know how to make the stone, I will have a link on this right top corner here to show you how to make the stone. But if you just want to use for practice, you can uh, go on the bottom uh, description. I will have a link for you to sign up a newsletter and you can download the stone for free. Now I wanted to make a ring size. Let's go ahead to set it up for whatever you want. In my case, I have 16 millimeter. So, um, so the radius will be eight and then that will be my ring size. Now we want to see like what shape of the horseshoes that you wanted to have. Uh, basically, I want to start it with a circle and for whatever size you want it. And make sure that this is right. It's the guideline for our stone to start to work on it. So I may want to move my stone on to this where the beginning is going to be. I also wanted to cutting off where this is going to end. So I'm going to draw a line, see where that whole shoe's opening is going to be, making a mirror to mirror to the other side and using that as my cutting tool to trim this off. All right, so my stone is going to starting from here and all the way to the end. So once we have that, I want to move this to the correct position and to make sure that the stone is close to where the line is to start with. Okay, I just trim it a little bit more open. And next what we wanted to do is we want to move uh, the stone from, make sure that um, your vertex is on so we can snap on it. I want to uh, snap into this vertex and snapping into this end point there. So that's where we are going to start it. And we are going to use the command. It's under the transform and you have array a long curve and then you want to array this one so this is the stone you want to array hit enter and this is the curve we kind of need to guessing how many they are so that's guessing 10 and it looked nice over there but we wanted to make sure that the distance is enough for us to put the prong now it depends on you wanted to have a shared prong or you want to have you know each of a stone has a full prong we want to measure, uh, make sure that the distance in between here, for example, uh, that's roughly snapping here and here, and this is about 0.5 millimeter. That is enough for having uh, two prong in between. So that is a good distance for what I have here. Once we have that, I'm going to build in um, the rest of the ring. So let's go ahead to making another circle and this circle I wanted to make sure is bigger than the stone that we have because we need to have a little bit wall there so I'm going to have roughly something like this and another one simply just scale this down a little bit the same wall size and then have something like this so that'll be my wall okay so let's start in building this ring it look a little bit stronger uh, wall that I have there because I always like it to be stronger so it's easier if once you're casting you can finish you won't like lose too much of the material. The next things I wanted to do is creating the oval and I'm going to snap in here and depends on what size do you want it uh, how thick the ring that you're going to have in this case you can see I have something like this pretty thick all right, so we're going to pick up this circle and this circle and let's bring up to the top for where the ring is going to start it with. And it needs to be over the stone a little bit. So this is the curve that we have. Now let's go ahead to build uh, the bottom ring shank. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, using the uh, arc tool, snapping into the zero, snapping into the quadrant here and quadrant there. I always like to have my ring is a little bit taper on the bottom. So just moving the control point up a little bit so you will get the taper a little bit on the, on the bottom. Now to attach this to that side, we can simply just draw a line. So we can go ahead to draw this line holding the shift to make sure that it is 
it is going up on that first point, and then we can connect it into this point. All we need to do is having that profile, if you like it, and mirror to the other side. So we can join all those three together. Double make sure they are on the same plane. If they are not, you need to make sure they are flat. To making the surface, we need to sweep this guy. So let's go ahead to split this guy right in the middle with the point right there. So now I have two curves there. We can look at the perspective to making this more like a signal ring. We are going to using the surface command. On the surface command, you got sweep to rail. You got rail one, rail two, cross section here and here. Don't forget to go into the very last point at the quadrant there. Make sure that they are in the same direction. And I also want to record a history so that allow me to do some changing here. So for example, if I felt like this is too coming down too much, I want it to be thicker. I can move in this one because the history is on, so it will continue to follow. Now, if everything looks nice to you, you can go ahead to click on this surface and using the command cap, then you will cap this one. We can now using this circle as our ring size and we want to extrude a planar curve straight and we can use a boolean difference. Difference this ring out of this ring size. So now we can have this. All we need to do is cutting out the center right there. So let's go ahead to take a look on the top view. We want to draw a straight line roughly from here to outside right here and having that one to mirror to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to pick up all those curves here and send them to another layer so it's easier for you to see. And that's just looking at those layers right here. So we want to make sure they are all contact since they are in different height right now. So we are going to pick up all four curves right here and we are going to use the command project to C plane and we want to delete the input. So now everything is flattened to the C plane and we can trim each other, trim it off the area that we don't want it. Okay, so now I'm keeping this one here and going to make another curve just connecting this point and this point for something like that and join them. This is going to be our new cutting tool. So I'm going to use that to uh, extrude the planar curve straight. I only need on one side, so both are equal no. And make sure you uh, have it over the stone. So if we turn it back the ring that we have, this will be our cutting tool. Let's go ahead to use a bowling difference, this out of this one. And then this is the ring that we get. So I need to cut an opening out uh, for the stone to show off. So let's go ahead to duplicate it, the age that we have here. So you got one, two, three, four. And since this is a seam, so there's an extra there, five. Make sure you pick up all of them and join them together. And I'm also going to use in the offset curve command and that's offset maybe 0.5 millimeter going inward. So I have a new curve there. Okay, so with this curve, I'm going to extrude a planar curve straight and we want to go down just a little bit lower than the girdle. So now we have our cutting tool that's go ahead bowling different this one out of this one. So now we can see our stone there. As working with the prong, so I'm going to create the prong. It's about this long and I'm going to pipe it. Let's say the diameter is 0.6 millimeter. And then I'm going to moving this prong over here. Another prong will be over here. So make sure that you are not touching the wall. Otherwise it will be hard for setting. There's another one that's going to be here. And this one's gonna make a copy over there. Okay, so now we have those four, one, two, three, four. We are going to use the same command to array a long curve. And this is the curve we're going to array and we want to do 10 of them the same thing. We might need to do a little bit of adjustment there. 
because this is touching the the wall so i'm going to move it out just a little bit so it's not touching the wall it may be cutting it too much there uh, i might need to make this one just tiny bit smaller and move it outside a little bit and for the other side we can simply just mirror to the other side there so now we have the prong if you'd like to learn more about stone setting, I have an uh, online course talk about all different type of uh, stone setting for 3D modeling. Check out the link at the description below. To make it look a little bit nicer is you can have a bevel edge. It's more like bright cut when you're setting the stone. So I might want to do maybe 0.3 millimeter uh, for, for it to look like the bright cut. And so we want to do this one, this one, and also this one over there. So then if you look at the render view, it will look nicer with the bright cut. And you can hollow the ring if you like to, to reduce the weight. That will be our horseshoes design. If you like my video, consider to join the membership. That will give me the ability to create more video to share with everybody. And there's a lot more tricks and tips that I show in the membership program. Please like and comment. Let me know how you like it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next.